but uh Welcome back to more Nick Merckx, the second channel of Nicky Merckx. Guys, in today's YouTube upload, we are reacting to the history of Warzone, okay? It's a well-made video that dates back to the beginning of Warzone up until pretty much now. And it shows all the different guns and the play styles and how the game has transformed into what it is today. You'll see your boy, you'll see Swagola Barjola, you'll see Timmy the Fat Man, you'll see the 2X, You'll see everybody in this. It's a trip down the lane of memories. It's gonna play on the strings of your heart. Little nostalgia. If you like today's YouTube video, don't forget to, come on now, like the video. And drop a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite timeline was throughout this video. You already know for me, it was the Bruin on Verdance. Guys, enjoy today's upload. I'll look for you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Peace and love, baby. Warzone 3 has now been with us for a little over a month, and we already history have History of Warzone, meta. Jet! History of Warzone! about all the previous metas we've seen in Warzone. We've had some beloved, balanced, and very fun metas, and then there's the- Okay, that sounded crazy. ...metas everyone hated. So today I wanted to share with you guys every single Warzone meta from launch to present day. A quick disclaimer, I'm not gonna go through every single gun that was like in the meta, I'm more so breaking down eras of the game. That being said, some guns are going to be missed, but I just wanted to talk about the guns that you had to be using if you wanted to compete. Starting with the launch of the game, where for the first couple of months of the game, we had the M4, the HDR and AX50 with thermal, the Grau 556, RPG, Car 98, MP5. Pretty uh, sure I've said it a million times on the channel, but when I think of the pandemic, I immediately think of Warzone, but more specifically, this state of the game. The uh, M4 was a very dependable and forgiving gun that anyone could use, and to this day remains a viable choice. Then you had a few different choices for snipers, which we haven't seen in Warzone since. Mine, and just about everyone's favorite, was the Car 98K. It was super quick, had little bullet drop-off, and one shot to the head still. If tactical long-range sniping was more your thing, you could use the HDR or uh, AX50 with the thermal sight, which just seemed to be a laser at long. Also, the body damage was insane, which allowed you to one-shot players who weren't even fully played uh, without a headshot. Then, there was the Growl. I think everyone can agree that this was everyone's favorite meta AR. Throwing on the Archangel Barrel, you have this beautiful iron sight that allowed you to fork- I don't agree. There's my, I, my favorite AR was the Kilo. The Growl was nice, and remember the pink can anime M4 that we had with the RPG? That was kind of a cool little kit, too. That was off-rip um, stuff, but I, bro, I loved- I love the Kilo. The Growl was cool. It's just traditionally for me in Call of Duty in general, I don't prefer to uh, to use ARs without a sight, you know? And the Growl, everybody was using without a sight. So, like, the Kilo was in that kind of stage where everybody had a, like, they had that ELK sight or even, like, the blue dot. That shit was fire. Forgo any optic, enabling you to kit this out to be an absolute laser. Not to mention, it's still pretty damn good today. I've seen people make videos about using this in Warzone Pacific and still dominating. There's even a couple of weirdos who would run a double growl class where they would have the one long range kitted out, but for your other one, you turn into a nutty SMG that somehow also worked. However, if you weren't an absolute psychopath, you would pair this with the MP5, which would also be a viable option right. for the rest of this Nobody game's life cycle. Ever. But if you're a no good piece of shit like me, you paired this with an RPG that made for a great close range substitute because the one shot radius wow. on this thing was broken. Not what to mention clip. the vehicle destruction was awesome. Yeah. A quick honorable mention goes out to the snake shots. Although they were very broken and possibly the most broken version of a shotgun Warzone has uh. ever seen, they weren't near as viable because this is before Rebirth Island or Resurgence in general had been released. And Verdance being a long range map, it wasn't near as common that you were super close like that in this state of the game. A couple of nerfs and patches later, and that brings you to the meta just before guy. the Cold War integration, where we saw guns such as the Origin 12 shotgun, the R9 shotgun, the AS Val, the Fire M13, music. the Fire Kilo music. 141, and most notably, the Bruin LMG. Not much to say about the shotguns other than they were pretty broken with the Dragon's Breath rounds, and honestly, just not fun to play against. The AS yeah, Val had this bug with this bullet penetration that allowed you to shoot through the entire map, and that is this? not an exaggeration. Oh but even after they fixed God. the bullet penetration, it was still a really good gun. Honestly, it was perfect to run with a sniper, specifically yep. the Car 98K, because it acted as like a. This is what I want right now. Something I can build out that has crazy damage close range and not like a big clip. You know, I, like I don't need 80 bullets. I just need 20 or 30 bullets, something that just deletes people, so I can win every close range gunfight in a cheesy way. You know, I want that.
SMG AR hybrid thing. Now I want to go ahead and lump the Kilo and the M13 together because they acted very similar to me. They were both very accurate but didn't deal the most damage so you really had to hit your shots. A nice feature about the Kilo is that if you were an absolute sick bastard you could throw on the monkey nuts on this John and treat it pretty much just like an LMG. But throughout all this chaos during the state of the game the absolute most broken gun at the time was the Bruin. This was another one of those can't beat him join him situations since this gun was leaps and bounds ahead of everything else at the time. Nerfs eventually made this thing unusual usable which i think everyone was happy with okay now we have the buddy. cold war in a what, what's this guy about bro oh, first of all no okay look nerfs is not what killed this thing buffs to the amax is what killed this thing if you guys remember correctly i mean look it did get nerfed eventually but that wasn't what knocked it off they buffed the amax and the amax was so good that when you got in a gunfight with a Bruin, I mean, you you would typically lose, but the Amax, you were so much faster. So I don't know about that one. He's got his facts wrong a little bit with the Bruin timeline. The, and, the, and look, I mean, the Bruin, that's the gun, man. That was my gun. So I'm going to feel some type of way when you're sitting here saying everybody's happy they nerfed him to the ground. That thing was lit, man. Come on now. Integration era, which is also about the same time when Rebirth Island got introduced, which not only changed how the game was played, but obviously added way too many weapons into the mix. However, right after Cold War came out, the dominant ones were the FFAR, the Akimbo wow. Diamatis, the MAC-10, and most notably, the DMR. Aside from the FFAR, this may have been my least yeah, favorite yeah. state of the game. For starters, making all yeah. the Cold War guns meta right, is a shameless attempt to get people to buy the game, yep. but aside from that, the DMR-MAC-10 combo was ridiculous. The DMR could shoot as fast as you could finger blast the trigger and the mac 10 had no recoil a lot of damage in a massive magazine absolutely no reason to not use this smg this however crazy. if the mac 10 didn't do it for you you still had the akimbo diamatis which were a three round burst killing machine insane accuracy a decent mag size and crazy damage made this thing very very unfun to play against yeah. however there was a little glimpse of light during this dark meta with the ffar this yep. famas like ar was a laser that was also really good at close range and that was a perfect fun. gun to run with the sniper also also have a universally loved iron sight yeah. this was another fan favorite gun i think yes 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 now bro been yes out for a couple months a new update to modern warfare 2019 I would bring that a brand new gun, gun known as the amax this dominated this go. state of the game but there were still other viable options such as the fara even at a short period of time where we saw a burst meta with the cold war m16 and the aug and to yeah. round things off another broken pistol which you pretty much use as an smg because of its insane movement yes, yes, and yes. its 80 round drum yes 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 the Psycom. overall not the worst meta since the Amex was very good but actually required some recoil control by the player which made it a high risk high reward gun and although the burst meta was broken and extremely annoying it didn't last long since it got hit with nerfs pretty fast now we're at the time frame of about late spring of 2021 to the release of Vanguard, and here's where things get out of control with just an absolute hodgepodge of guns in that range. Yeah. We have the MG82, Swiss K3, yeah. OTS9, yeah. the Bullfrog randomly, yeah. XM4, Krieg 6, Cold War AK-47, wow. and Cold War MP5. Yeah. Honestly, I would say there's only a few guns worth breaking down here. The first being the MG82, which had absolutely no recoil and a high capacity for its magazine. This yeah. made it a lot of fun to use and made big team wipes at range easier than ever then you had the swiss k3 which was just as good if not better than the car 98 and made for a great not substitute. better it was not honestly better. a lot of fun having two really good bolt action marks and rifles to choose from at the time Damn, then there was clip. the xm4 which i'm pretty sure remained relevant for the rest of the game's life cycle it was yeah. pretty much the m4 for modern warfare 2019 but just the cold war version not much to say about this meta other than the swiss k being introduced was the most i'm gonna pause it this is when it started getting weird i think like how many of these guns were nice but th this was right when it started getting away from everything we loved i think chad agree or not or no like this was the beginning i think like right yeah right yeah agree okay right before caldera maybe yeah and then and then it was just rough important thing going on here <laughs> Now we have the Vanguard merge, which completely changed the entire game. The Vanguard guns, obviously, we know supported 10 attachments, and pretty much all of them were broken. I know a lot of people love this state of the game, this but me playing personally, all the OG I Nintendo. could not stand it. The meta-defining guns at the time were the MP40, the Owen gun, the Bren LMG, the Cooper Carbine, the Well gun, the STG44, and the PPSH. I kid you not, every gun on this list has zero recoil. Like I said, I personally started to take a backseat around this game because I just this hated the Vanguard time? meta. Even though I own the game, 
game, I had absolutely no desire to play it to level up the guns. The MP40, Owen gun, PPSH, and Well gun were some of the most broken SMGs we've ever seen in Warzone. They all had insane TTKs, and specifically the Owen gun held its own at mid-range with a 72 round magazine. Then you have the Cooper, SDG, and Bren, which again dominated every other gun from Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019. If you weren't using any of the guns listed above during this time, you simply had no chance. I know a lot of sweaty Resurgence players love this state of the game, but I simply could not get into it. Me neither. Now we'll take like spring of 2022 all the way up into the launch of Modern Warfare 2, which is honestly the same story as the last meta. Saw another Vanguard circle jerk of guns that included the Type 100, the NZ-41, the Mark 5, H4 Blixen, and UG. Like I said, these were all meta and overpowered, but definitely not near as toxic as the meta before this. Somewhere in this window, Fortune's Keep was released, which I think Infinity Ward wanted to go away from SMGs for a little bit and enable them more like mid to long range guns to have some time in the spotlight. But around this time, like I said, this is about when I stopped playing the game or really caring, so I don't really have much to say about it other than this is when COD really started to go downhill. Which brings me to the launch I, of Warzone 2 in fall of 2022. Look, man, the one thing about Caldera that I'll, that I'll say, like, I like that island, palm tree, beach type of thing. I just think they missed with the way they did it. I mean, I, the POIs are few and far between. There aren't too many that you remember that you're like, oh, I got to go there. Um, I just, they just didn't, they didn't do a great job. But the map itself, off the rip, felt incredible to get into i mean you had peak is it peak? You had peak you had all these like beautiful scenes I, I don't know i i i thought that there was um like a plan there where they were going to add a bunch of pois to kind of a plain island it didn't feel complete right it just didn't feel done it felt like they okay this is what we got as updates will come out they'll keep adding big cool pois iconic POIs that they'll bring back some maps and stuff that we love and put them on the BR. That's something I've always been confused about. Like, you own this Battle Royale, you own all the games you've put out. Why don't you revisit some iconic maps by placing them as POIs in the game? I just feel like that's something they should be doing all kinds of stuff on. I mean, there's so many just superb maps throughout Call of Duty's history that they could just easily copy paste with a little bit of work you know like blending it into its surroundings the metas in warzone 2 honestly only revolved around a couple of guns at a time it never was like a super wide range like at launch we had the rpk the fennec the tac v and the tac 56 there were seriously like no other guns you could use in this meta while the rpk and fennec were dominating everything and were very easy to use the tac v i would argue was much better but just required a little more precision to use tac 56 was also very user friendly and i think everyone just loves the iron sights on this of all the guns during this meta though the fennec was definitely the most broken if you had any gun but the Fennec in a close range situation, you always die. Fast forward a couple months where we had Resurgence introduced to Warzone 2, where once again we had a very narrow window of good guns to choose. We had the Rao LMG, the Saken LMG, the Hemlock AR, Vaznev SMG, and the Lockman Sub. You can say what you want about Warzone 2, but I honestly love just about every meta this game had to offer. The Rao was a textbook definition of this gun takes skill to use. You control the recoil and you're going to do well, but most players could not do that because of how much recoil it had. Then you had the Hemlock which was a very good AR, but only supported a 45 round magazine max to balance it out. Then the Lockman sub and like Vaznev were both very fun to use, but even after nerfs still remained viable throughout Warzone 2's entirety. Now, I'm just going to cover the rest of the game's life cycle, which to me, honestly, we didn't really see anything too crazy in the meta besides, like, two really standout guns to me. Starting off with the Cronin Squall, yet another one of my favorite metas because it was a high recoil damage gun that I think rewarded good players. You paired that with the ISO SMG and you were unstoppable. After a nerf to that, we saw the Lockman 556, which people were calling the Grouch because of its zero recoil build. Once that was nerfed, we kind of entered this weird state of the game where you could really use anything, but I would say most people were using the Cast Off 762, which was a aka the AK-47. I really couldn't tell you exactly what the meta was from Summer 22 all the way up until <laughs> Warzone 3. Yeah, cause nobody played so now that, that brings us to modern day where we're playing Warzone 3 on Urzikstan. And honestly, there's a lot of guns in the meta right now as we approach the Season 1 Reloaded update. Which I'm sure is about to change, we're probably gonna get some crazy nerfs here first, but these are the guns that we have right now. The MTZ Interceptor, Polymont LMG, Bass B Battle Rifle, WSP Swarm, WSP 9, Striker, Ram 7, and the MTZ 762. With a lot to choose from right now, I think most would agree that the Interceptor, Polymont, and Swarm are at the forefront. The Interceptor has already seen a nerf 
but it's still broken. I mean, all they really changed was that it can't two tap anymore. Instead, it's a three tap, this which is still ridiculous. The swarm shreds at close. Yeah, okay, right. So this video was probably put out a while ago. Strange, and the Pulleymont has an insane mobility and accuracy with the conversion kit. However, the other two SMGs offer a little bit more options at mid-range, which I think are better with the Interceptor. And you also have the Bass B, which has also seen a nerf already, but this thing is also still ridiculous. Maybe not at long range, but at mid to close, this also makes a great pair of, for the Interceptor or the Cat AMR, which I would also go ahead and throw in the meta since it's the only sniper that will guarantee one shot to the head, even without explosive ammo. Just a few honorable mentions I'd like to go over with is the Snake Shots, which I kid you not, were only the game for like 48 hours honestly really crazy how fast infinity ward got these out of the game and similarly the lockwood 300 somehow through all the patches got reverted to the broken warzone 2 state where the dual trigger has insane range and one taps also but that is the entire warzone meta history in one video wow. like i said i didn't cover everything job, but i really though. just you're wanted good, to highlight good. those meta defining guns that were dominating the game at what i think you did good i mean I, look that's a lot of history right there chad you have a favorite like gun or timeline I know a lot of you guys are going to buy like COVID days and then probably Gra or MP5.